because these interviews are always so good. So what I did today is I'm going to have Armando come on to talk about the mortgage market. So he's got to follow Steve and I'm off the hook on this one. So oh. I, I got wiser over this uh, COVID situation. It only took you 10 weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Good job. Yeah. All right. Diane Varney, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Wow. Mike Goodman, Diane Varney, Kim Rosenstein. Wow. Dulce. Hey, good job. AJ, I turned on the uh, streaming thing. I was the, my, yeah. my technical job. <laughs> good. It's on. Okay. Speaking of agents on fire, Dulce Ibarra has been a total monster during this COVID time. Yeah, tell me the numbers. Uh, I don't even know what her numbers are at this point, but she's just been on fire. Six, six, seven deals, Dulce. Is that right? I, I can't hear you, Dulce. You're you're muted. Eight. Eight. Sorry. Ugh. Jason Penrose. Hey, buddy. Hello, hello. Long time no hear. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we had a call. We just talked an hour ago. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Armando, welcome aboard. Welcome. Armando's the mortgage guy that's going to come on at one o'clock and follow Steve Powers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that he knows what he's in for. <laughs> yeah. Doing my best, I guess. You, Armando, I coach the CEO of a mortgage company, so uh, you're going to do fine. He's going to do great. He's going to do great. All right. So, Steve, I will tell you, we did expand the number today. I think we're going to go over 100 people for you. So that was very exciting. Um, wow. At $1,000 a person, I get nothing. Exactly. And, and we'll double that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Good. Very, very cool. Um, no, it's very good. It's all good stuff. We're going to get started here in just a, um, a moment. Masterminding with Neil Schwartz and today's guest, Steve Powers, talking about all kinds of great things and how to overcome the marketplace and overcome our head and how to do the things that we don't want to do when, you know, when we're supposed to do it and just powerful, powerful stuff. Um, little housekeeping We're we're live, we're extreme, we're streaming live on Facebook and you're available, uh, here on Facebook. You can put your questions, uh, in the box over there. And then if you have questions, you can put them in the zoom group chat over here. We'll pick those up. Robert's really good at following those things. Uh, we will have it open if Steve's okay with that and time permits, toward the end for direct questions. But if you do have a question along the way, please don't hesitate to post it in the Zoom chat. Steve, you ready to rock and roll? Ready to rock and roll. All right, let's lock and load it and let's move forward. That's Masterminding with Neil Schwartz. Our special guest today is Steve Powers. Steve is one of the great coaches from the Mike Ferry organization and a guy that I have, uh, we mastermind together and share coaching calls and coaching wins, gosh, for years, um, 30 years, uh, uh, Steve, something like that, 25 years? It's been 20 plus. Yeah, yeah. We coached together with Mike Ferry then and uh, Steve stayed, stayed on and built a, a great career doing that. Um, I think we talked the other day, Steve, out of the 80 people that you do coach for Mike, uh, more than half of them earn in excess of a million dollars a year. And is that the, the numbers yeah. we talked about the other day? Yeah, yeah that's fantastic. It, it really is. And kind of where I wanted to go with this today, if you will, is to kind of talk a little bit um, about the, the agent struggles, the things that we're running into, the the the, the problems uh, of the everyday life, the 
the winds and uh, things that we had in January and February. <laughs> and then when we kind of all came to a somewhat screeching halt, at least in terms of the general marketplace, certainly not for a lot of the agents that are on this call and a lot of the agents that you and I coach. Um, but, you know, I want to talk about the COVID a little bit. So um, I want to just take it from uh, the question is, uh, give us a little background on your career and um, how you ended up with Mike Ferry maybe and uh, ended up in coaching and then we'll kind of go from there. Uh, it's relatively simple. You know, I, I've always coached. I was a coach before I was a real estate agent. And I have a guy, an attorney in, in Scottsdale, Arizona to thank for real estate. I was going to law school and working for him during the summer building houses. Oh, wow. He was an attorney. And he asked me, why do I want to become an attorney? And I gave him the blah, blah, blah. And he goes, ah, you see that butthead realtor that just left? He's making 6% doing nothing. Don't go into <laughs> law, go into real estate. I'm three credits short. So I went into real estate instead of law, much to my uh, happiness. And uh, I've always coached lacrosse, baseball, football. I went into real estate. Mike offered me an opportunity to coach part-time. Uh, and that's really my calling. And uh, I was selling a couple hundred homes a year, two, 300 homes a year, working 143 days a year and coaching part-time. And gradually I increased the number of coaching and Leased out my business in Florida, and I have a Florida real estate license brokerage that I also have uh, one in Virginia, one in Florida, and that's how I got here today. Busy guy. Busy, busy guy. So the typical agent that you're running into today, I mean, what 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 are the issues that they run into? I mean, eh, we know about time management. We know about prospecting. We, But, you know, let's go below the lines. Let's, let's talk behind the curtain with Steve. The biggest thing is lack of skills. If they have the skills, then they have the confidence. You know, Mike has always taught us that knowledge equals confidence, ignorance equals fear. If anybody on this call plays golf or attempts to, and you're afraid to hit the ball over a pond, even though it's only 100 yards, you can hit the ball 100 yards every day without the pond, but put the pond there, ball goes in the pond because right. of a lack of skills and belief. So, if your skills are lower than the market says they have to be, you'll be hesitant to get up on time, follow your schedule, call the people, ask the tough questions because you're not good with the answer. So I think the biggest thing for people to get through this period and beyond is to work on their skill set so they have the confidence to handle any situation. Yeah, but, but uh, the agent says, yeah, but the, this script isn't me. So what? Well, I get that, but go ahead. If talk, you're an actor on a Shakespearean them. play, uh -huh. are you going to read your words or Shakespeare's? Well, of course I would read Shakespeare's, but, you know, only because the director told me to. Well, they're paying you a million dollars a week to read a script. Yeah. It's not improv. The only person in my lifetime that can do improv and sell out a show was Robin Williams. He did three shows in San Francisco, three nights in a row. Every show was different. None yeah. of us are Robin Williams. Mike Scripps, Scripps work. Who are we to change him? Got it. Bob Kuyper. Do you remember Bob Kuyper from Minnesota? Of course. Uh -huh. Bob said something interesting to me. He said, you know, a lot of times Mike tells us stuff and I don't believe it. And I choose to pick and choose what I like, what I use. If I did 100% of what Mike told us to say and do, 90% of it would work and I'd make a lot more money. And that's Interesting. Yeah. Well, that's what, that's what we need to do. Okay. So um, is there a difference between coaching uh, an agent to go from, let's say 15 to 25 deals than there is from an agent from 75 to hundred deals? Yeah. 15 to 25 is harder. Okay. Talk about that a little bit. What do you mean? When you're doing a deal a month, a deal every five weeks, you got a pattern to fill your day. Honest to God, and nobody take this offensive. If you're only selling one house a month, one house every two months, you're not full time. Because what do you do for 50 hours a week for 200 hours a month for one deal? 
you're making up work. You're expanding the work. You're joining Habitat for Humanity to build a house for somebody not paying a commission. You're spending two hours at Starbucks socializing. You're on Facebook all day. Somebody to go from 15 to 25, much harder patterns to break because they're used to not working. Somebody at 75, their systems are bad. So it's just a change to a better system, better efficiency. And the funny part is uh, I had a great fortune coach in Bernie Gallerani, and he was at 100 deals. And I said, Bernie, when we get to 300, you'll work so much less than you do at 100. And now he's at 550. He goes, I'm working so much less at 550 than I ever worked at 100. So if you're at 10 to 25, talk with Neil, talk to somebody. It's huge changes. 75 to 100, it's just systems. It's just systems and efficiency because you're already there. You're just missing it. So, so Steve, huge changes. So huge changes are will, working on the skills, um, prospecting more hours, developing the discipline. Walk, walk me through a little bit of that. What, what do you do with an agent? The first question I ask everybody, Neil, is, and, and let's use Jason because he's on this call. And Jason sends me a text every single night. Jason, what is your job? To set a qualified listing appointment. See how simple that is, Neil? I get everyone to understand that they have one job when they get up. I make the joke. You get up, you pee, you wash your hands. And after that, you have one job. Find a qualified listing appointment. Nothing else matters until you find that one appointment. Because one appointment is five a week. Set five, go on three, take two, be rich, 100 deals a year. Set five, go on three, take two, be rich. Your only job is to set a qualified appointment. Now, easy to say, hard to do. So the first thing I recommend is everybody pick a time that they get up in the morning and get up at that time every single day. Discipline equals freedom. So Neil, the first thing I would tell an agent is, what is your job? Get them to understand to set one appointment. Number two, what time are you going to get up every single day so that you start the day at the same time? Because you know, you know if you get up at a haphazard time, well, then your whole day is shot. Can't totally. Can't begin a schedule without totally. starting a time. So those two things begin the pace for how we're going to become rich then wealthy. So you you and I are saying the same thing all the time. You say it slightly different. I say it this way. You say it that way. What break, what, when, when you find an agent that has a breakthrough, the light goes off, what, what's going on in their mind? Do you find that the pain, uh, that, that, that the pain of staying where they are is just so great that they move through it? Uh, help me with that. I try to teach them that they're business people in sales through real estate, that their profession is real estate to earn money to buy a great life, that we're not realtors by definition. Realtors by definition have I love me walls behind them with the plaques of how great they used to be. They're on every committee in the world. If we look at real estate as a fundamental great way to make a great living, by providing great service, it's a win-win. Then the object is to sell as much real estate as fast as possible to get out. Then to take that extra money and invest it correctly and then not have to sell real estate. Because who the heck wants to be on a listing appointment on Friday night when we're 80? Nobody. So I get them to understand that I'm a business coach for real estate agents and we're gonna treat you like this is a business for a salesperson. You're a salesperson, not a realtor. Realtors are on committee. Salespeople make sales. Agent comes to you and says, that's all well and good, but um, um, you know, I just don't feel like getting up at 5.30 in the morning every day, at, but I want to make the money, Steve. What do you say wow. to them? Everybody wants to be rich, but nobody wants to do the work. <laughs> Now, I'm pretty straightforward, and I'm going to keep it really clean here. But I would say to an agent, so at the end of the day, when you've worked three out of five, three or four, five hours out of 10, and you go home and look your kids in the eye, you tell them, dad worked the whole day with this kind of production? What kind of father are you? What kind of, re what kind of husband are you? What kind of wife are you to tell your family, I'm fooling you by going to work? 
you're either making money or go home because there's no reason to be a work in sales if you're not making money, making appointments, go home. One time I was late home for dinner, 6.30, I was supposed to be home at 5.30. My son, Will, who's like eight that time, he says to me, dad, you're late. I said, yeah, I'm really late. Well, did you list a home today? No, I didn't, Will. Did you sell a home? No. Then why'd you go to work? Great thought. Absolutely. We're there to make sales all day long. Yeah. Uh, one of the coaching things that I'll work with my agents on is uh, when they don't do what they're supposed to do at the end of the day, I ask them if it's okay if I get their um, spouse or significant other on the coaching call with them and we can share with them why you didn't do the, the numbers, why you didn't do the walkthroughs, why you didn't learn your scripts and dialogues. It's a very powerful, compelling tool. So good stuff. Yeah. As a manager, you ask as if it's okay. I just call them. Hey, you know what your husband's doing today? Nothing. Get on Zoom. Watch him. He's not getting lucky tonight after this behavior. I'll talk to him next week. I love it. <laughs> Honestly, guys, your kids look at you as a hero. Act like it. Okay. Great thought. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, so now we're moving to the next level. We've been through this COVID thing. We March 15th or so everything kind of shut down. Um, we've had, we've interviewed a number of agents, top agents in the country. And for the first week or two, it kind of shook them up a little bit. Did you have a similar response for some of your agents? Absolutely. Everybody yeah. was home afraid that if they walked outside and breathed, they were going to fall dead like the, like a zombie. Right. That's what right. we were told. Breathe exactly. and die. Um, so what were some, so, so that shifted for a lot of us, you know, it shifted immediately. Boom. We went right into action because that's what we do. Right. But uh, so what did you have some of your people uh, do that were having some difficulty with that? First of all, each one of my coaching clients is an individual. So I had to take into account what their surroundings were. If their mom and dad who were on chemotherapy were living with them, they were a much higher risk of bringing them home coronavirus and hurting someone. So we had to do an individual assessment of what their fear was with the coronavirus and what they could handle. Okay. Number two, Mike gave us a great question. I think it was May 15th. He added a question to the prequel. Some people caught it. Some didn't. Is everybody healthy? So we immediately started calling our past clients. Hi, Neil, it's your realtor, Steve Powers. How are you today? Doing good, thank you. Well, that's great, Neil. Everybody in your family healthy? Everybody's healthy. Thank you, Steve. Oh, excellent. Now that I know everyone's healthy, now I can move into my normal script because I took that, that bad thought of coronavirus and put it out in the light. Is everybody healthy? Yes. Excellent. Now I can talk without any worry that I'm being kind of a butthead, not paying attention. However, sometimes people said to me, actually, my mother is sick. Oh, that's terrible. What's the plan to make her better? Not uh -huh. I'm sorry to hear that, which is about me. What's the plan to make her better? Keeping it on the customer. So we work with our clients how to ask that question. So they came from contribution, not from selfishness. And so if we had somebody that was unhealthy, I would say, Neil, what's the plan to make her healthy? Neil, was calling you to see how I can help you with any of your real estate needs here in 2020. Obviously, you have bigger things on your plate. So unless you have any questions about real estate, do you? Which opened the door for you to talk. Sure. Neil, why well, don't I let you go back and take care of your aunt? If you need anything, you call your realtor, Steve Powers. Fair enough? Fair enough. And it was a way for us to keep in touch with our past clients. I try to get them all to call their past clients all of March and April to reconnect, to see that we were here to help, but also to talk about real estate. Because I need, I'm a real estate agent. I need to sell something. And there are people who wanted to sell during COVID. Some of my clients had the best March, April, Mays ever. Because yeah. they were the only ones with the foot on the gas pedal. They weren't at home hiding in the news. Yeah, exactly. Good, good. Um, so um, George 
on Facebook asked a question and it was kind of talks a little bit about what we're trying to do here and, and understand sometimes the, the newer agent or the agent that isn't doing a lot of transactions. They, they wonder, my gosh, I'm floored. I'm, I'm, I'm swamped with these two pendings and I have this one listing and, and, you know, you're talking to people that are doing six deals, eight deals, 10 deals. I can't even imagine that. So, so in fact, is that's the conversation that Jason Penrose and I had earlier today, just exactly about that. So how do you help an agent coach them through the two to three to get them to the four to fives? How does that work? The first thing I do is look at their schedule to see how much time is wasted every day. To say, tell me what you did in the afternoon. It's amazing how people's day expands to fit time allotted. So we try to multitask lots of things. If we sell a house to a buyer and it's a good sale, 600, 800,000, I teach them to hold the, to go to the open, uh, to hold the house open for the inspection and then go door knock up and down the street while they're doing the home inspection. So not only are we sitting at the home inspection, we're going to meet all the neighbors who see our competitors sold sign, but we're stealing the next seller. So what I try to do is I try to show them that going from three to six deals isn't that hard because really your three deals are only 90 minutes a day. I got six and a half, eight and a half hours more a day. I can find some, some more signatures. Got it. Cool. All right. Good job. Okay. So, but we want to go now. I want to go from, from 10 to 12 um, to 25. We talked about that a little bit earlier. Okay. That jump you say is a little bit easier Help us through that. When you're going to, from, 20, from 10 to 20, you have to have better systems. It's all the systems. You know, Mike uh, affiliated with Vulcan 7 here a while back, probably a great move for all of us. Because having looked at everything, they have a, it's a neighborhood search or something like that. This allows you to literally get on the Vulcan 7 and start calling five, six numbers deep instead of being on the phone by yourself and going the auto dial or single dollar at a time to make sure we're compliant is going like crazy to help us grow our business. We have to delegate more. For instance, I had a great fortune of coaching Josh Barker. What people don't know is Josh's transaction coordinator did 60 closings a month, just her and one secretary because the systems are there to delegate everything. As realtors, we have a tendency to take everything on to justify our commission, yes? Yes. I want you to delegate everything. Here's a simple rule. If I give a loan to a banker and the buyer calls me to ask a lending question, they're fired. That banker has to call our buyers twice a week. So the buyer doesn't call us because when I'm talking to a buyer, I have under contract about an appraisal, that's a lender question, Am I talking to a new seller? Am I finding a new client? So the key is to look at your day and decide what are you doing that someone else can do equal or better, faster or cheaper. So it frees you up to be making more appointments. It goes back to the beginning. Our job is to set appointments all day, not just do prospecting for 90 minutes and then try to find other stuff to, to do. We spend a lot of time doing that, don't we? It fills the day. Exactly. Good it's job. It's easier than prospecting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so let's open it up here uh, to a couple questions. Um, let's see. Diane Varney, you want to ask your question? Unmute yourself. Hi there. Hi, Diane. Good to see you both. So my question is about calling our sphere of influence. You were talking about it earlier and we got permission, so to speak, to incubate leads a little bit under the circumstances to kind of create a, a B list as you were, as opposed to what we're taught about finding a buyer or seller who wants to do something in seven to 10 days. So now that we have this list of this business that will probably take place this year, but not immediately, how do you suggest we keep in touch with, with those particular leads? 
you maintain this list. And Mike recommended that we get rid of the seven to 10 for most people because we couldn't find someone who wanted to sell in seven to 10 days, obviously, right. because we couldn't meet with them. So Mike said, hey, extend it out until this is over. Well, Diane, does the public think it's sort of over? No. What day is it going to be over? We don't know. So call the client to see if they think it's over. Hi, Steve, this is Diane. You were kind enough to talk to me back in April, said that you wanted to wait till the COVID-19 is sort of over. That appears to be this week. I'll see you tonight at five. See. Yeah, you know, on, on this point, Steve and Diane, this is really important because I think we are in the middle of it and we don't see it quite over. But I got to tell you something, the public, they're done with this. They're, they're done. done with this. If you walk the streets, you'll see people in restaurants. You're going to see them in stores. You're going to see the cars. There's lots of cars on the streets. You know, I walk the neighborhood, um, take a walk every evening in downtown Beverly Hills and, and walk the streets in here. And there was a time about eight or nine weeks ago where there was no one on the streets. I actually have a video of turning around on Rodeo Drive and showing everybody what was going on. There was no traffic, no people, nothing. I just did the same thing last night. It's like business as usual. So I, I think the public thinks we're back. Um, and, uh, and we need to tell them. So if you have those, those leads, uh, go talk to them, go call them, go follow up. That, that's my take on that one, Steve, sorry. And one out of two will tell you, no, they're not ready. They're still scared of the, the coronavirus. Excellent, I'll call you next week. And one out of two won't. And I'll be meeting them tonight at five. Exactly. I, I'm not looking for Mrs. Wright. I'm looking for Mrs. Wright now. Yeah, good point. I Thank like you. That. That was great. Good. Thank you. Good question, Diane. Thank you. Hey, Steve, um, Raymond Martin on, uh, from YouTube says, should I hire my first assistant at how many transactions? He put a number down here, but I'm going to open it up to you, Steve. Is there a number for you? First of all, it depends on your economic situation. If you come into real estate with lots of bank, and I coach people that come from, they own companies and they sold them for tens of millions of dollars. They come in with a full-time assistant because they have the depth and they understand delegation. So if you've got the money and you've got the drive and you've got the right system and the Mike Ferry system is perfect and you've got a coach that's telling you what to do, then I'm saying jump in and get an assistant because we need you to go hunting. In my coaching, I use the term, we hunt buffalo. We don't skin buffalo. We don't train horses. We leave the tribe and go shoot buffalo all day long. Somebody else will skin them. So if you can afford an assistant and it won't, bankrupt you, do it right away. Depending on your price point, anywhere from 20 to 30 deals, you need an assistant. Because at that point, you're starting to do way too much admin and they'll be interfering with your daily schedule. Because as we're taught, every time we put a house under contract, we got eight new people to talk to. And if I can get someone else to talk to them, that's eight people I don't have to talk to. And that's eight new sellers I can try to find. Exactly. Good job. All right. Other questions for Steve? We don't have anything in the Zoom chat right now. There was a question that came in, Steve, on the chat. What are your recommendations for someone licensed less than a year? First of all, work for Century 21 Masters. Okay, that's good enough. We can stop it. Yeah, right that's now. it. End it there. <laughs> Thank you. Any I'll, other questions? I'll <laughs> I'll share a personal detail. About 12 years ago, I said to Neil, I'm trying to convince my wife. You remember the conversation to move yeah. to California. And, yeah. and the day I quit coaching, I'm going to come work for you, Neil, because I don't think there's a better place for an individual to be able to grow with the support and the systems needed. Now, if you're not making the money that you want to make, don't look at Neil. Don't look at Robert. Look inside. Look in the mirror. Are you really working 10, 12 hours a day? I have a 92 day plan with my coaching clients, June, July, and August. There's 31 days in August and July. We have a 92 day plan. I know the days they're working, the hours they're working. I know their vacation days. We've planned it so they're making money when it's easier to make money and they're taking vacations when it's a little slower so they don't lose as much. 
but I expect him to work 10, 12 days, 12 hours a day. June, guys, is the April and May we didn't have. We didn't have an April and May market. It's all in June till July 4th. So if you're not working 10, 12, 14 hours a day, shame on you. When you go to Neil in October, go, Neil, I'm so broke. I didn't make any money. Neil inside is going to go, well, you didn't work at all during the summer. What'd you expect? Yeah. Well, we, that, that isn't quite what happens here. <laughs> seven, seven o'clock in the morning, they get a phone call from me, get out of bed yeah. and get going. Um, and we do have a reputation in the community, good, bad, or indifferent. But when you go to work for Neil, you go to work. I um, love that. That's why I yeah. go to work for you. Yeah. So that, that, that's the attitude, but our agents make a lot of money and, yeah. um, and, and do really well and have a, a good time off. Um, yeah. So Steve, thank you for the commercial. Let's get back to you though. Let's help them. So what do we need to do right now? Uh, post COVID. All right. We're it's behind us. I think it's behind us. Uh, I don't know if there'll be a, another spike. There may or may not be. And, and if there is all the people that are in the two bedroom, two bath condos that, are sick and tired of looking at the walls. You need to be talking to them and selling them a house right now. Because in right. 90 days, if they go back into quarantine, are they going to be unhappy? That's right. Okay, so talk to us. What do we need to do post-COVID? In my mind, you have to act like the next 60, 90 days, it's all or nothing. You know, we have an election year in November. No matter who you want, it's a, it's a choice of two, in my mind, two idiots. Honestly, 400 million people in the country, and these are the two we get, really? So when we have an election year, things are a bit dicey. Whether you're one side or the other, it doesn't matter. It's an election year. I'm having everyone act as if in September, the faucet's going to get turned off. I'm, I don't think it's going to, but we are working as if it's going to. So in September, if the election comes in and gets all fluey, and the faucet turns off for three months, we've made enough money through the summer to get through winter. Remember, squirrels work all summer for winter. They don't rest when there's lots of acorns. They work their ass off because when there's no acorns, they can go back and get the ones they needed. So my suggestion is whatever you think you're going to work, you better add it another 25%, but not add it being at work, Neil, add it talking to people, talking to someone door knocking people, meeting people that can make a decision, not just being at work. So we are in the talk to people business, aren't, they, aren't we? Contacts are contracts, contacts uh -huh. to contracts. I love it. All right. Good job. So uh, Nat, another one of our agents asked you uh, about working a database. Okay. So what do you, how, how you have a database? What is your definition of working your database? How many contacts, how much, touching, et cetera. One of the things to remember is that when we have a database, 10% will give us a deal every year if we ask. We've all heard that, yes? Yeah, absolutely. What we don't recognize the fact that we have to call the database four times. Well, if I have 10 people times four call, that's 40 calls for one deal. Got it. That means 39 calls don't do anything, one works. So if we miss a call, we could have missed the one in 40 chance of getting that deal. And if we don't stay in touch with them, then we're not working the database. Additionally, if we look at Jason Penrose, Jason is married to a wonderful woman. They have different personalities. They have different spheres. So in your database, are you calling both partners? Are you calling the husband and the wife separately four times a year? On top of that, if Jason, who is a bit analytical, generally not going to give me near the referrals as his wonderful, expressive wife, who knows everybody. So I'm going to call Jason's wife six times a year because Jason's wife talks and knows everybody. The best of referrals come from amiables and expressives. Analyticals don't want to give out your name because they don't like confrontation. Drivers don't have any friends, so they can't give out your name. <laughs> well, drivers have three friends, so those three friends will use you. But the amiables and expressives, they know everybody. So when I have an amiable, I work him or her because that's a much better lead source. So call the husband and wife, the partner separately. 
call them in their personality style. It makes the call better for them with a higher return to us. Call them four times a year and some of them need to be upgraded because they're bird dogs. But if you're only calling the husband in January, the wife in March, the husband in September and leaving a message in December, that's not working your database, Neil, because the wife only heard from you one time. Got it. How are you their realtor? You got to work yeah. them. Okay, good. Great point. Awesome point. Okay, other questions for Steve Powers. So there was a question that came in <clears throat> through Facebook is, Steve, do you think there's going to be another wave of short sales? And if you do, how would you handle that? I don't believe it's going to be a wave. I think it's going to be a little sputter. And the reason for it is I have some people way up in banking. And this is much different than the last time when we had the big wave of short sales. The economy was in a dumper. Nobody had jobs. Nobody could catch up. If I needed to sell my house today because I don't have the ability to pay my forbearance to catch up on my mortgage, and I bought a house, Robert, four years ago for three for four hundred thousand, how much is that house worth today in your market? From four let's years ago it, to let's today. Let's just call it five hundred. Yeah. So I got equity. Why am I going to turn the house into the bank when I can sell it in a week with a realtor, take 140000 out, and then solve my economic problems? The difference between 05 and now is there's equity in these properties, and we haven't seen this go down. So unless after the election we have a terrible recession, I don't think there's going to be a wave. Will there be some short sales? Yeah, but I don't see us thrown in our keys like we did. So I think that the market's going to do this, but let me be clear. When the market's going up, people buy and sell. When the market's going down, people buy and sell. When interest rates are going up, people buy and sell. When interest rates are going down. I don't care if prices go up, prices go down. What I can't stand is level. Nobody does nothing when it's level. When the prices are flat and the interest rates are flat, nobody has any urgency. Change is good. I don't care which way it goes. Love it. All right, good job. Other questions for Steve? Steve. So question came in, Steve, is you talked about three to six, 15, 10 to 20. How do you get from 35 to 50? You got to look at your marketplace, first of all. Are you in a resort market? Are you selling luxury homes? If you're selling $3 million homes going 35 to 50, that's a haul. And you can do it. And I, and if you do that, call me. My website is Steve Powers Real Estate Coach, uh, com. Okay. And get in touch with me and I'll show you. But if you're a regular real estate agent doing six hundred thousand dollar homes, four hundred thousand dollar homes, going from three hundred uh, from thirty-five to fifty, it comes down to your schedule, your systems, and your skills. If your schedule is off, you won't have the time to do those extra fifteen. If your skills are off, you'll have to work way too hard to convert more. And if your systems are bad, where you're overseeing your assistants all day and doing their job, well, then you won't have the free time to find those extra 15 deals. Because a simple thing, guys, if you look at trying to do 15 more deals, that's one deal every 22 days. That's it. So if you're not a Mormon, you can work on Sunday evening. You work every Sunday evening for three weeks in a row. I guarantee you find a deal. So getting the 50 deals is relatively simple. It's in your database. It's in your market. You just have to clear your data, have a little more time to find those deals. But Steve, how do you really feel? This is the easiest business <laughs> in the world. I love it. I'm going to tell you a quick story. I live on a lake. I have a police detective who was here nine, 10 years ago, came down for three days. His text was, I'm coming to your lake. That means he had a bad day. He shows up, he sits on the back deck. He has a big bandage here and a big bandage here. Not a word. A realtor shows up to use my ramp. A realtor friend of mine uses the ramp, goes fishing all day, comes in, has a beer. Tells me about his deal that was horrible. Oh my God, termites, 500. I mean, Neil, it was a 15 minute story over $600 worth of repairs. I said, that's terrible. 
And I know what happened. I said, my friend here is a police detective. What happened to you? He said, well, I stopped a car for speeding at two o'clock in the morning, walked up to the car. A guy grabbed me from the back seat. Then they jumped me and started to stab me. What happened? He goes, well, I was able to get away and they drove off. And he said to my friend, who's the realtor, he goes, but honest to God, I thought this was a problem, but you had to do all that work. So you only made $15,000. Oh my God. I'm so glad I'm not in real estate. Honest to God, we have the easiest job in the world. You call people that want to sell. You use a script that gets you an appointment. The seller is going to meet with three idiots. You only got to be the best idiot. Then they hire you and they give you a bunch of money to put it on the market at the right price so it sells itself. Then we bitch and want to complain all the way to closing and get a check for 12 grand. Whew, I don't know how anybody does it. That's right. And then I want to be a speaker. <laughs> or a manager. Or a manager. Exactly. Can open my own company. Exactly. And I'm not belittling our profession, guys. Just understand, our job is to set appointments, go on appointments, take the listing, get it sold, tell the world, get another. Repeat, 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 repeat. Seven years later, I'm out of here. Lots of money. Thank you very much. Enjoy the show. It's very smart. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You bring it home with a, a passion. I like that. Good job. Um, Bernie Gallerini, thank you for joining us. Good job, you, baby. Bernie. See Bernie there wave, waving hello. And my deal, that was awesome. I appreciate it. Steve Powers is the best. I, I, I coached for Steve with Steve for 10 years. And I'll tell you what, man, this guy, anywhere he goes, I try to listen to him because he's just absolutely amazing. Bernie, only 10 years. Maybe you need to do it again. You know, maybe you missed something. <laughs> well, no, I guarantee you I missed a lot because it was never a call with Steve Powers that I wasn't writing pages of notes. So no matter where any of us are in production, we always have something to learn from somebody. Yeah, I appreciate that. Very, very cool. Steve, um, okay, we have... Um, Oh, we have an energy question here, okay? And you seem to have a lot of it. So the energy question is, you know, you're, you're telling people to get up and get to the office at seven o'clock in the morning. My God, Neil calls him at seven o'clock and tells him to get going. I mean, this is what we do. We actually ask people to get up and exercise at five or 4.30 in the morning, all right? So, and then we're, we're calling and we're door knocking and we're working on the scripts and we're working on the dialogues. So he, the question is, to do that throughout the day and day in and day out, five, six times a, a, a week, what do you do to get the energy to be able to do that on a regular basis? That's the question. It, it comes from having a plan. You know, if you don't have a plan, then you don't know where you're going. If you're just walking around in the desert, not looking for anything, well, one leg's inherently shorter than the other, you're just going to walk in a big circle. If you don't have a plan what you're doing, then, then you have no energy. If you don't have a focus, you know, one of the best books I recommend, all of the people I read uh, that I had coach is a book called You Squared by Price Pritchett. Yes. It's 39 pages. You'll yeah. love the book. It's a two bathroom visit book. You visit the bathroom, you've read it. Okay. It's yeah. a wonderful book, but Bernie knows it. I kept going back to page 18. You must learn to embrace chaos, allow disorder in your life, shoot from the hip, don't try to figure it out, just keep moving forward. You've got a family at home that you left this morning and told that you are going to work. Work means you meet people that wanna sign contracts. Work does not mean you make up stuff so you can go home at night and tell a tale of woe. You make appointments, that is your J-O-B. And, and part of it is, by a show of hands, because I'm only on screen one, how many people have a written five-year plan? See, there's the problem. You don't know where you want to be in five years, so you don't really have one-year plans. See, your five-year plan depends on your one-year plans. And your one-year plan depends on 90-day plans. Yeah. And your 90-day plans depend on 30-day plans, depend on seven, depend on daily plans, breaking it down, and your daily plan depends on what you choose to do for the next hour. So if you don't have a strong enough goal, if you're not emotionally attached to your goal, 
people, then you'll find things to do all day to justify your day. Folks, we're all going to die in 100 years. It's a blank. So you better make as much as you can during that 100 years. Because, man, this is such an easy business to make a lot of sales and provide great customer service. You better be dedicated or why'd you go to work? Life's too short to do half. You know, I don't think we can get a better ending than life's too short to get a better half and get out and make it happen. Steve, this has been awesome. Can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I know my staff and my sales agents do and everyone on the mastermind call. Uh, if you unmute yourself, Steve can hear you. Unmute yourself, everybody. Good Thank job. You. Thank you. All right. That was awesome. Thank, Thank you, you, Steve. Thank you. Steve Powers. Thank you. All right, guys. Fantastic. Money. All right. Thank, thank you, you so much, Steve. Thank I really you very appreciate much. it. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Neil. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Our you. pleasure. Our pleasure. Thanks, Our pleasure. Steve. Okay. So, um, question is at least for my group, anyone else that wants to stay is welcome to. What did you guys learn today? What, what did you learn? I, I, I like his uh, 532. That resonated with me very well. It's easy. Five, three, two. <laughs> five, three, two. Repeat it. What What was it? Uh, set five appointments. Go on three appointments. Take two. Take two. And Absolutely. you'll be rich the rest of your life. I you like that part. Right. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Good. What else did we learn? We're this is Jess. Oh, good. sorry. Go uh, ahead, Karen. We're hunting buffalo. I know. <laughs> Yeah, wow. every day just go get an appointment karen you do that pretty well but i was thinking maybe for you we could move it to two appointments a day mm -hmm. or is better that's all we have to do right you got nothing else to do turn everything else over to todd and your son and and just go <laughs> all right Thank all you. right good job nancy what'd you learn nancy dupree i learned that we should uh get more referrals from our amiables and expressive database people. Yeah, because the, the drivers aren't gonna talk to you anyway, right? <laughs> <laughs> or the analyticals are too worried. Exactly, exactly. Yes. All right, that was a great thought. That really was, that was very interesting. Okay, go ahead, Jay, uh, Josie. So you talked to us about our June plan. He's talking about 92 days. <laughs> That's it. I, I tell you to prospect 200 contacts in a month and Mike Ferry says 500. Okay, I'm a wimp. I'm just a wimp. All right. <laughs> Good job, everybody. Go ahead. Uh, what else? What else did we learn? Hi. Hi, Neil. It's Diane. Hi, Diane. So I liked what he said about when you were asking questions and if somebody said, oh, somebody is sick or something like that. He said the response was not to say like, oh, I'm sorry or something like that. He said, oh, that's terrible. What's the plan to make it better? Yeah. And we could use that for anything because how many times do uh -huh. people say negative things on the phone to us, even just on a regular call with a prospect, right? Right. They'll say something that tries to derail you or get you off script or go on a tangent or whatever. So I'm going to use that for everything now. Oh, oh that's, that's great. terrible. What's good. the plan to make it better? Yeah, good point. Absolutely. What else did we learn today? Yeah, this is Iris. It is about schedule, system, and skills. Yeah, it it you know we talk about the skills all the time, and it's the skills and the you know look, Iris, you're a great example. Uh, you've done, you've learned your scripts, you learn your dialogues, you work on them every single day, and oh, isn't it interesting? how you're taking more listings and closing more deals. Isn't that interesting? Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Neil. Yeah, no, keep it up. Absolutely. Delroy, did you own it? Uh, yeah. yeah, I like when he said um, discipline equals freedom. Yeah. You know, one, do what you're supposed to do. You know, getting up in the morning, make it, you know, make the calls. Then, hey, it will allow you the, to live, you know, the, the lifestyle, I, I would say that, you know, you want to live. Yeah, absolutely. It's a very good thought. Okay, good. What else did we learn today? Neil. Go ahead, Esther. 
I, I'm, I'm looking for Mr. I'm not looking for Mr. Right. I'm looking for Mr. Right now. Right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a great one. We wouldn't teach that to our daughters, but we would teach that. <laughs> you know, Neil, I, that was the, one of the first things that popped in my head. No, we <laughs> don't teach thing. that to our daughters. <laughs> okay. Line right there. There you go. <laughs> no, Robert, it is not. <laughs> okay. Good. You guys are killing me here. Uh, all right. What else hello, did we hello. learn? Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Julian. Yeah. All right. Hey, uh, thank you, sir, for, uh, yeah, I had a mess call today. You let the oh, let's mute him. Okay. What else do we have? What else do we learn today? Can I say something, Neil? I don't have my video on. This Tess. Is Tess, welcome. I'm here listening. I like the way when, when he talking about COVID, like what we have right now, he opens up a conversation about being human, humanity, ask the question about is everybody healthy? That's yep. really good. Meaning that it's all about them. It's not about you. Uh-huh. That's exactly right, Tess. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Good stuff. Anyone else have anything else they want to share? You know, Neil, I had, uh, I mean, I got a lot, but there's two things that I guess were kind of interesting. You know, he said, your kids look at you like a hero, act like it. You know, it's just, you know, it's something that, got, you know, Mike's always, it's kind of, he kind of jokes about it, but there's a lot of truth to it. He says, if you want to fill out your numbers analyzer, have your kids fill it out for you. Oops. You know, <laughs> how many contacts did you make today? Oh, uh, five. Mm -hmm. You know, how many properties did you preview? None. You know, you know, have your kids do it. <laughs> I think that's kind of an interesting thing. The other thing that I put down here, you know, Ed Kaminsky said June is right before halftime. And we need, in his words, where we got to kill June. So we're tied at halftime. And Steve said, June is the April and May we didn't have. You should be working 10 plus hours a day in June. So, I mean, it seems to be a common theme from some of these people that we really got to go big in June. Well, it's a common theme. And all this masterminding we're doing is learn the scripts and dialogues, get out there and do your job. When you're done doing your job, go back and learn the scripts and dialogues, be focused, be consistent, be committed, and then do it again tomorrow. And you will make a lot of money. I don't understand what gets in the way. I don't. Steve said it very succinctly. I thought it was great. Absolutely. Um, okay. Neil, if and, I go ahead, please. Bob from Montreal. I, I think um, the key is also that we have to embrace change and adapt to it quickly. Um, so beside the book that he recommended, U Squared, which I read it recently, and it's a great book. There's another one that I read recently called Who Moved the Cheese? My, my who, moved, who Moved My Cheese? which is really great for also uh, the fast adaptation to what's happening. As, as Steve said, change is great, no matter how, which way it goes. <laughs> yeah, no, you're absolutely, you're absolutely correct. And, and being versatile and doing what needs to be done and learning your scripts and dialogues, you know, I mean, on March 16th, um, we were working in the office. On March 17th, we had opened our virtual office here that we've been in every day, five days a week, um, from basically 8, 8.30 in the morning till 5, 6 o'clock in the afternoon with management, with teams, with scripts, with dialogues, with training, with masterminds like this, learning, going, pushing. And you know what? 184 sales in 45 days, you guys. 184 sales you generated in 45 days in quarantine. I will not let you forget that because that now becomes a baseline from which everything will be measured from. So all of you need to push it, focus it, keep going, continue to work on the skills, show up at 8.30 in the morning, show up for these calls, go um, from nine to noon where we have uh, our open mic, and then what do we do now? Normally we would turn it over to Robert. 
Not today. I learned my lesson. <laughs> I learned my lesson. See, we do this every time. And then it's like, all right, Robert, teach a class at one o'clock. I'm like, oh, good. Follow that.